Right then, I'm going to make another another epic video on in the series of Steve's recipes, and this one's going to be the pinch of nom creamy garlic chicken. So if you want to stand by, I'll just get all the ingredients ready and then we'll crack on. So here we go, these are the ingredients. So we've got two chicken breasts. This is supposed to be 400 grams for the recipe. Uh, these weigh in at 470, so we've got a little bit old, but that doesn't really matter because it's free, because it's protein. And then we come along, we've got 250 grams of button mushrooms. They're going to be thinly sliced. Then we have the core called cream, low fat cream cheese, 175 grams of that we need. A sprinkle of paprika for presentation. Then we need a, a beef and chicken stock cube mixed with 400 mils of water, boiling water for the stock. A finely chopped onion, so I'm using a red onion because I don't like white onions, they're a bit too strong for me. Three cloves of garlic, so I'm using half a garlic bowl. A little dash of Dijon mustard. Uh, a teaspoon or a tablespoon, a teaspoon of white wine vinegar is in the recipe and then salt and pepper to taste. And I'm going to put it all together and then what I'll do is I'm not going to show you how to how to combine all the recipe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it all up and then I'll show you the finished thing. So the recipe calls for 400 grams of uh, thinly sliced chicken. So we've got our chicken breasts. Lay them out. You normally see a chicken breast. You can see the grain of the meat and all you do is just finely chop it into slices. This is the best way of doing it, it's the easiest way. Make sure you've got a sharp knife, because the worst thing, there's only one thing more dangerous than a sharp knife, and that's a blunt one. Because blunt ones are where you hit yourself. When you get down to the bottom where the lumps of fat are, just cut them off and chunk it all up, put it in the dish ready for cooking later. So here we go, We've, if you look now, we've seasoned the chicken, we've put some salt and pepper on it, that'll, that'll stagnate there for a bit, and then all we're gonna do now is chop up the mushrooms. Finely chopped put the mushrooms, it says in the recipe. I'm not going to show you me doing this for the next five minutes as we chop up the mushrooms because by the time I finish doing this you'll all lose the will to live. All right. So I'll just show you how. Right and here we are by the magic of a television. All the mushrooms, 250 grams, are chopped. Now when you look at that quantity of mushrooms, that's normally what we call a shitload of mushrooms. So we're going to cook them down in a minute, so we're just going to go and get an onion and chop it. So the recipe says to do a thinly, uh, thinly sliced onion. Well me, uh, I'm a fuss pot and I don't like onion. In fact I think it's the worst thing that's ever been invented by man, beast or god. So I like to finely chop mine. So it disappears into the food and melts and dissolves and all the rest of that. Part. Okay, so we will just do it like this and then we'll finally chop the onion, there we go. This is a way of finally chopping an onion. This was told to me by a very famous chef called Smudge. So here we are, we're ready to go now. We've got the chicken there, we've got the combined beef and, and chicken stock there. We've got our onion and garlic and now we've got a big pan and we're just going to give it a spray of some uh, this is clear garlic oil, this is uh, garlic rapeseed oil, so it's um, 23 sprays is one sin. So we'll just give it a couple of sprays there to stop it sticking. And we've got our chicken over there, we're just going to put that into the pan and sear it and we're going to put it in this dish there. Okay, so here we go. Sizzle, sizzle. And all we do is browning the chicken, just sealing uh, the chicken itself. And once it's done that, we're going to deglaze the pan, which is what the recipe calls for. And to do that, we use a little bit of Worcester sauce and white wine vinegar. So here we go, into the dish. And that's set that aside for later, because we're going to come back to that. And now we're going to deglaze the pan with a teaspoonful of white wine vinegar. And a dash of Worcestershire sauce. There we go. And now we add the onion and garlic. And that is a three cloves, I've put eight cloves of garlic mixed up there, which I've just done in a mortar and pestle with a bit of just a smidge of the salt because I think it does a lot better. I'm just going to put them in there and saute them till the onions got soft enough and go a bit brown. I might just turn the heat down here because you don't want burnt onions. Mm -hmm. 
then you can put, just add a bit of stocking because it's got a bit dry, just to keep it all loose. And it does say in the recipe that you can do this, just add a drop of the stocking, stops everything burning. And now we're going to put in our shitload of mushrooms. There you go, 450 grams, or 250 grams of mushrooms, which is a lot of mushrooms, look at that. That's for the panel. But they'll actually uh, cook down in a minute, so that'll be half that amount. Back up to me, Clive. Cool, that's nice, nice glass of wine. And then what we're, the next ingredient we're going to put in it is the teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Now what I might do is later on when it comes to putting the cream cheese in, um, if it's not creamy enough I might just whack in a tablespoon of uh, creme fraiche just to make it a bit creamy and that will make it half a sin. But, uh, We'll see how things do. So there we are. You can see now, out now there, the reuse reducing down a bit. And you actually, because mushrooms contain a lot of liquid in themselves, they'll actually produce liquid as we're uh, cooking them down. And they'll actually, uh, as you can see now, that that was up there before. They're now it's now less than half the size it was. Right, so now it's time to add the stocking. And what we do when we when we're doing this, we we'll put the stock in there. We'll, we'll cook this for about five minutes, and then we add the chicken back in, and we cook then cook that for another ten minutes to make sure that the chicken's cooked properly. And then the last thing that goes in is the quark or the cream cheese. So you can use um, quark or you can use Philadelphia low-fat cheese. Uh, it just says use a low fat cheese from Quark and Philadelphia are. So they reduce down enough now. So what we'll do now is we'll put the rest of the stock in, which is what the recipe says. So this is the combined, if you saw there, that's a combined beef and chicken stock cube. Put that in there. And that's got a really, if you look at it, that's got a really rich, because I used um, one of those uh, rich beefs uh, stock pots. So it's got a really rich look to it. And then we'll just have a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. There we go, one teaspoon full of Dijon mustard. So this is me following the pinch and long recipe to the letter, all right? So if this tastes crap at the end of it, I'm going to tell you. So we let the, what we do with this now, this has got to cook down. Um, or simmer down a bit until it reduces by half. Okay. And then what we do then is we reduce the heat. So what I'm going to do now, you can see it's simmering away. We've got to wait for that to reduce down so it's reduced by at least half. And then we'll add the chicken back in, cook it for a little while, and then what we do then is, um, oh, before we add the chicken, we actually add the, the cream cheese, make sure we don't get any lumps, and then we stir that round and round till, till it's a nice creamy sauce, and then we'll add the chicken back in and cook that as it is. Okay, so that's it. We'll come back once the stock is ready. So here we go. That's now reduced down nicely, so you can see it's, it's really thickening up. And that's down to really is down to about half of where it should be. So what we'll do now is we'll get the cream cheese and whack it in. So get yourself a spoon. And we'll put the first part of the cream cheese in because I've actually got two tubs of uh, cream cheese. So I'll have half of one and I want to use one up. And then I've got the one that we used in the other video uh, earlier today. So this is the rest of it. So Together, combined, these come in at um, 175 grams of cream cheese. 
There you go. And we'll see how creamy that makes that and see what it tastes like. And like I said, if it's not if it's not as creamy as I think it should be, then what I'll do is I'll add a bit of creme fresh in. And what the recipe says it may be it may go lumpy. And the idea is to stir it round and round on, on a low heat, so I've turned the heat down. This is an induction hob, so I've turned it down from high to half heat. So here we go, we're reducing down, and some of you may who, who are really switched on and were paying attention uh, may notice that the camera angle and everything else has changed, and that's because I just run out of battery in my camera. So I've had to swap it the card out and put it into another one. So here we this is now uh, all mixed in together. It's got some fine lumps in it for some reason, I don't know why, but I've, I've actually found that with quark, because you, you get that now and again when you cook, if you cook with it. And you get these, if you can, I don't know if you can see there, you get like fine lumps, you can see them on the spatula. So we'll just have a taste of that, see what it's like. Now this is very like uh, doing a stroganoff where you use French mustard. Ooh, that is nice. That, this is excellent. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat now and I'm going to put a little bit of creme fresh in it because it's um, it's got, a, although it tastes okay, it just needs a little bit of something else. And I think a little bit of creme fresh is, is what it needs. So if you do this, you're going to have to put half the sin. So I'm going to use my tablespoon, just put a dollop in, that's all that we'll need, no more than that. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to put the chicken, we'll put the chicken which is here, we'll put the chicken back into the pan and then that's going to cook for about 5 to 10 minutes depending on how long it takes the chicken to cook. And then the next time you see the see this everything like this, it'll be all on a plate, ready for me to eat for my tea with my beautiful wife, Christy. So there we go. There goes the chicken. And we're gonna leave that to simmer away. We might just whack the heat up to six, which is one above half. And for those of you who are on gas, half is not full. Right? And if you're watching this in black and white, this is lovely. So there we are, that's the chicken in there, and we're just going to put that to simmer. So we need to, we need to put it up, turn it up a little bit. And that's going to simmer for another 10 minutes or so, five to 10, I reckon 10 minutes, and I'm getting it all over myself. Um, and then we'll come back and it will be all plated up on a plate with some rice um, and a side salad, all ready to serve. So there we have it. That's my, uh, Followed the recipe to the letter, except for the little bit of creme fraiche, for pinch of nom, creamy garlic chicken. Right, so now it's time to dish up for tonight's dinner, and what we're going, what's going to accompany the um, pinch of nom, creamy garlic chicken, is whole grain uh, rice with quinoa and ancient grains which comes in at uh, two and a half cents for a packet of 250 grams. So if you divide that bet between two, that's one and a quarter cents each. So one cent basically, because we don't do quarter cents. So there's the rice. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our asparagus and bacon. So we've got a bit of, uh, bit of speed to go with our dinner. Uh, well, that's a bit good, I've actually overcooked this, but otherwise. <laughs> they look delicious. So there we are, so that fits there like that. And then we'll just gently spoon on, if we can get the spoon out of the thing. Spoon on the Pinch and norm, garlicky chicken. And there we go. And that is 
pinch of nom, sin free garlic and chicken, asparagus wrapped in bacon, which is sin free, and one sin for the whole grain rice and quinoa. Enjoy.